like to invite those who can to stand up to read the book of Psalms. Psalms 69. Psalm 69. I'm going to read four verses. The 2, the 19, the 20, and the 33. 2, 19, 20, 33. Psalm 69, verse 2, 19, 20, and 23. Psalm 69, verse 2, and then he's going to skip. Amen. It's written like this. I sink in deep myrrh, mire, where there is no standing. I've come into deep waters, where the floods overflow me. Verse 19. You know my reproach, my shame, and my dishonor. My, adversity, adverse, my adversaries are all before you. Reproach has broke my heart, and I'm full of heaviness. I look for someone to take pity, but there was no one. and for comforters, but I found no one. Now verse 33. For the Lord hears the poor and does not despise his prisoners. And praise the Lord, glorified be your name for yet another moment in which we have fellowship with you. And we plead, Lord, that in your word, you once again may bless us. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. I sunk in deep mire. The word of the Lord says that if we confess our sins, the Lord is just and merciful to forgive us. And here the psalmist David, he begins exposing, placing before the Lord his life, his heart. And he comes to the Lord and says, Lord, I have sunk into deep mire. So when we speak about mire and mud, is related to the uh, mistake, the failure of man, uh, of sin of man. So he begins to expose and place before the Lord his situation. Because the God of David, the God of Israel, our God, he knows all things. And there's nothing that is hidden from his eyes. But many times we want to hide from God our own situation. But it is impossible to hide from God mine and your and our lives, our ways, our actions, our, our actions. And the Bible says there's a psalm that speaks about this. If I hide in such place, until then, even there, your right hand will support me. If I dried on the wings of the dove, there's no place for me to hide. Uh, the first man, Adam, when he sinned, he tried to come up with a solution to his situation. But he was not able to resolve his situation. But God, give a solution to his situation. So when man 
wants to fix his own situation on his own life, man gets into more problems. If he seeks the Lord, he plays for the Lord his situation, God will give a solution to his situation. There's a song that says the following, Jesus changed my life. And many times, when man wants to hide from God, even try to first resolve his problems before he can come back to the presence of the Lord. And to this day, I have not been able to, to witness anybody uh, being able to do this. And David then, he says, I sank into deep mud, in deep mire. In Brazil, in Brazil, people have an expression, they say, people is sunk into uh, death. Man, generally speaking, is sunk into death. A death is... A, it's overflowing. It's death that man cannot uh, ever pay. He has to work all, all the days of his life. It's a death that can only be paid through the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is the death of sin. And it can only be paid through the high price that was paid and shed on the cross of Calvary. It was the blood of Jesus Christ that purified us of all of our sins. So the individual was sunk into deep mire. He was in a mud, in a difficult situation. And he understood his situation. It's good for us to know our own situation. The situation is difficult for me. It is difficult. It is complicated. So then he recognizes this on the Supper of the Lord. The Bible says, examine yourself. And he examined himself. And sometimes when we examine ourselves, it's good to ask the Lord to search our hearts and know our, our thoughts and see if there is any evil path and guide me through the righteous path. And David searched himself and examined himself and said, Lord, I'm sunk into deep mire. And the situation is so complicated, so difficult that I cannot even get out of this situation. And another thing, I am not even able to stand up. Who has ever walked on mud? I walked on mud. In my region, there is a lot of mud. There's a lot of mire there. You give five, six steps and the mud. I even caught uh, crabs on mud. And on second and third step, you go deeper a little bit. And, and then the mud goes up to our waist. And then you sit down. <laughs> you can no longer walk. You get tired. Our spiritual life is like this. You take the first step, second step, third step, and after a while you, we're stuck. And we can no longer get out. We can no longer stand up. And you know what is the desire of the Lord? Is that man will remain always standing. The Bible says, stand up and I will speak with you. The desire of the Lord, that man remains standing in the presence of the Lord. To remain in a position that is pleasing to the Lord. But the situation of that man at that moment was not pleasing. It was complicated. He could no longer walk. Jesus is. Uh, Jesus is the way, but there are moments in our life that we cannot continue walking because we go astray from the path. We enter into the mire. We get stuck. We are detained there. And he says the following. Where there is no 
waters. And I, I have come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. First he entered into the mire and now it's waters. He went so deep into the waters that he could no longer control his situation, his life. He was now being led by it. Water speaks of people, speaks of human reason, human mind, human understanding, the things of man. Many times we are led by this. We are led in such a way by man, by a human mind, that in a short while we no longer have control of our lives. We are now being led. And now the situation, if, now the situation, everybody goes in one direction and you go together with these people. And then go to another direction, you go, you lost control of your life. Then David no longer had power to decide on his own life. He, he had no longer free will. He was now tied up. Where the, the current takes me that my life lead me. So the current is taking you, so then you go with the current to end up dying or drowning, to get out of the project of God, to lose your life. How many people today are not like in this situation? How many here have not also gone through the same situation? have not been in the same situation. So David declared to God his own situation. He reveals what he was going through at that moment. But my brethren, David was a servant of God. He was a servant of God. David was chosen by God. In the house of David, when the prophet entered, the prophet only sat at the table when David was present. Maybe you, my brother and sister, may be going through the same situation. How many experiences in which you have been in the, in the presence of God? How many times God has not spoken to you, saying that He loves you, that He has a project in your life, and God has already done many projects in your, in your, on your behalf and you, to your benefit. But now, you, man, faces a situation like this, sunk into the mire and being carried by the current of water, for the flow, flow of water. When you speak of current, it speaks of imprisonment and he says the following you know very well my situation my sin my insult so now he was being offended and being insulted so God they are insulting me and they are offending me. I sinned. And because of my sin and being offended and being insulted. Inside the following. You know my reproach. On verse 19. You know my reproach. You know my life. You know also what I'm going through. I reproach my shame, my dishonor, my difficulty. The finger pointed at me. And you know my shame. My dishonor. My brethren. There is something that humiliates man. It's sin. Uh, there is something that really humiliates man. When you sin, you, when you sin, the servant of God sins. He's the servant of God is humiliated. 
He's ashamed. He's humiliated deeply. David was going through this moment of humiliation. And he says more. My ad adversaries are all before me. For me you. Lord, the situation is all disordered. There's a tumult. I'm all embarrassed. I'm, I'm in difficulty. I'm filled with problems and difficulties. There is a lot of people um, accusing me of this, saying, saying bad things of me. And before the Lord, before the Lord are all my adversaries. My adversaries are all before you. And there were people before the Lord accusing him because the enemy of our souls, his name is known as the accuser. And the first opportunity that the enemy has, he says, Hey, you see? Look at your servant. That man that you you called. Look at his situation. Look at what he just did. And he says, Reproach has broken my heart. Verse 20. So all the humiliations, the difficult moments that he was going through, has uh, broken his heart. What it is to be, have your heart broken? It is to leave with someone weak, sensitive, anguished, sad, discouraged. And many times are we not like this? Discouraged, sad, anguished. It's only problems, only difficulties. And he said, I'm exceedingly weak. All of these things that were, was, were taking place there broke his heart and uh, and I am full of heaviness in verse 20. He says he was very weak because when we are weak, when we are heavy, we are full of heaviness. It is very difficult for us to take steps and getting up is a big problem. When you are very weak, we only want to stay laying down. We can no longer walk. So he was going through a moment so difficult, so full of heaviness, because walking and walking for him was a big weight. It was already difficult. Because before the Lord were all my accusers, I could, uh, they, they would only saw difficulties. And when we pick up the Old Testament, we see that the soul that sins, this one will die. Many times, man, when man is distant from the Lord, is because of this, because of this weight, the weight of sin that is upon his life. I sinned, and now the sentence for me is death, because the wage of sin is death. How many times man leaves only this part of the project of God? The condemnation that is upon his life, the weight of sin that is upon him. What that prevents him from walk, and now man grows weaker, and man does no longer wants to proceed in the project of God for his life. My brethren, the same text that says the wage of sin is death also says that the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. The same Bible that says that man has been condemned by sin is the same that also says that man will be absolved by Jesus who paid on the cross of Calvary for all our sins. And the word of the Lord says the following, my brethren, and look for someone to, the Bible says, I look for someone to take pity and that's the greatest mistake of man. And you're waiting for someone. Verse 20. There's a song that says, there is someone, the Bible says, the, the song says, there is someone that takes care of me. But this someone that takes care of me and takes care of you and each one of us, we never look for him. 
will look for someone. A man, a woman, an authority, a person. And he looked for. And many times you are living moments like this of mud and difficulties and problems and adversity in the spiritual life and the material life. Inside of home, with a family, with uh, our partner, only problems and difficulty. And we keep waiting for someone. I waited for someone. You waited until you got tired of waiting. In Brazil, there's, and there's an expression. If, if you're waiting for that person, you better wait sitting down because this person is not going to show up. Uh, I waited for someone that had compassion on me. It's sympathy, pity, a sentiment of sorrow for someone. Someone that wants to help you. Someone that gives you assistance. Someone that wants to help you to get out of the situation, to put you back standing. And many times we wait for uh, a help from a man, for a solution for our lives, for our adversities. And he said that he waited for someone to have compassion on him, but, but there was no one. There was no one. Remember of the paralytic in the Bethesda pool when the water was turned, no, no one would help him. He was paralyzed and one who cared about him. That's his problem. Many times, my brethren, we are in this situation, we are going through difficulties, and no one shows up to help, nobody to give us assistance, to accuse. There are many. When that woman, she was caught in adultery, there is a bunch of people that showed up, each one with a big stone on their hand. Hey, that's it. The law of Moses like this, see, we caught her, so now we're going to stone her. And that woman, was, was she waiting for someone to resolve her problem? No. But there was someone there that came to resolve her problem. There was someone there to deliver her from that. The one there that was not there to condemn her, but to save her. But this someone we never looked for. I waited for someone that would have compassion on me. But there was no one. No one. And for comforters. Who is the comforter? Is the one that in the moment of anguish and suffering, that person is there beside you to help you, to give assistance, to give you comfort, to turn that moment into a moment less difficult. But the Bible says, but I found no one. I found none. But if he didn't, the Bible says, if he didn't find it, it was because he was looking for, right? He didn't find, it was because he, he was looking for, he looked for, looked for, but he was not able to find, he found none. There was no one. My brethren, no one will uh, come up, appear to resolve a problem. There is no one to bring consolation to you. No man. No, not a single human being that can resolve your problem, your life, change your situation. No one. But on Psalm 46, it says the following. Help always present in anguish. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus is the one who comes to give you help, to give us help, to save us, to save me. And he can't, comes at that exact moment, the help very present in the moment of the anguish. So in the moment of anguish, pain and suffering, he comes close 
to remove any anguish, any pain, and suffering, and to dry up our tears. <coughs> so the Comforter, the same Jesus, he says, I will not leave you alone. You, my brother and sister, you are not alone. You are not alone. You know why? Because the Lord Jesus left the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit as the counselor. So he is the help and the comfort for your, for my, for our lives in those moments of affliction and pain and trial and suffering. And verse 33 says the following. For the Lord hears the poor. My brethren, the only one who hears the poor, the needy, the one that has been to help when you are going through a moment of difficulty, when you need help, the poor, the one that doesn't have sufficient to survive, to that one God hears. That's why David he said, I am poor and needy, but the Lord takes care of me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So he had the Lord. He had the comfort from the Lord. He had the Holy Spirit in his life because he was anointed of God. He was anointed. The Holy Spirit rested upon his life. That's what he said. For the Lord hears the poor. My brethren, you entered here tonight and I was the Lord needing a blessing for your life needing a deliverance, needing a cure, needing an understanding regarding the plan and project of God for your life, Jesus is present to bless you, to forgive your sins, to give a new heaven and a new earth, to open up your eyes, to tell you, my brother and sister, get up and walk, because this is the desire of the Lord for your life. Okay. For he, uh, the Lord hears the poor and do not despise my brethren. Jesus does not despise anyone. God does not choose a person over another. God does not love sin. He doesn't love sin. God abhors sin. But God loves the sinner. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because the love of God is greater than all our sins. Because in Jesus, all our sins can be forgiven. In John, it says the following, Because God loved the world in such a way that He sent His only begotten Son so that whoever believes in Him may not perish, but have eternal life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And this is the desire of the Lord, to give you and to me, to each one of us, an eternal life, a place in heaven, a place in eternity. Because the Lord hears the needy and the poor, it does not despise the ones who are captive, the ones who are prisoners, the ones uh, captive. Prisoners are the ones who are servants, the ones who have commitment with their lords. And, Jesus, and David had this commitment with God. He went through a difficult situation. He faced a big problem, but the Lord uh, punished him, corrected him, but also blessed him and saved David. And the punishment is necessary. And God says, I reproach and, and castigate whom I love. And David learned the lesson, right? My brother, my brother, a moment of difficulty and affliction is so that we may learn and learning and to believe and trust only on the Lord. My brother, the Lord has shown a man that has been walking and it's like if he was and his feet is, was, they have magnets. Wherever he walked, he attracted everything that is they made out of steel and iron and it became a weight that he could no longer walk he brought great suffering and pain but when he came to the house of the Lord the Lord replaced the shoes of this man iron speaks of hardness 
Sometimes we, we only look to the harshness, to the judgment. But the Bible says, in wrath, remem remember mercy. And the mercy of God is what prevents us from being consumed. And that's what the Lord is speaking to especially. He's using of His mercy towards your life. Amen. So let us sing a song. Is that the one? Amen.
Glory to Jesus. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Church, you stand up. Amen. Yeah, you can continue. Praise the Father, and we'll give you a thank you for this moment when we have been 
share the fellowship with you for your great grace and your love. It can be not compared, Lord. Bless be your name, Lord, for yet another night in which we we brought help and comfort to save us, to deliver us, to cure us, to forgive us, Lord, of our sins. Take us from peace under your protection. Deliver from the enemy. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, of a good uh, eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit with, with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The brethren may be seated. You who are here tonight, you, your brother and sister, you are welcome to this place. We have services every Thursday at night, uh, to every Tuesday at doctrinal classes, and Thursdays at 8, and Saturday at 9, and at service of glorification of the Lord, and also Saturday at 6 o'clock in the afternoon, and service with the women, and Sunday morning at 10.30 in the morning in Sunday school. You are youth. We have a special moment, a special set for the youth every Sunday at 6.15 of the afternoon. And also every Sunday at 7.30 of the night, another meeting with you. You, you're invited to participate. If you desire prayer for our life, a clarification of the word, or regarding the spiritual gift that was shared. Remain where you are, raise your hand so that we can identify, so that you may receive the proper assistance. I'd like to remind the brethren that we are in the month when we, when we, in which we are praying for our youth and, and the ones that were in college. 